What's up? Welcome back to Structure Free Statics. And in this video, we're going to continue our use of the parallelogram law. And this time, we're going to do a couple examples where we find the components for a given force. So let's get to it. So here, we're going to be given a resultant force. And we want to find the components of this force acting on two other lines. So here I have this force resultant of 30 newtons directed in this direction. Uh, alpha is 60 degrees and beta is 80 degrees. And we would like to find the components of this force along lines AA and BB. So this is kind of like the parallelogram law in reverse. I have at least I know I have the resultant and I know this would be the point where that my resultant is pointing and this right here back here would be the concurrent point so the first thing I need to do is sketch my parallelogram so at the tail of the vector I'm gonna draw a line that's parallel to BB there's my line parallel to BB and then from the again from the tail of the vector I am going to draw I'm gonna draw a line parallel to AA here, let me clean this up a little bit. You know, when you're using the parallelogram law, there's just no substitute for a good drawing. So make sure you got a straight edge, protractor, whatever you need so that you make a good and accurate drawing. So you see the parallelogram and I can choose one of those triangles to represent my uh, the vector triangle I need to analyze. So I could choose the upper or the lower triangle. Any case, I am forming essentially a vector triangle that is going to look like this. Here are the force components. This is the force acting along BB. And then here is the force acting along AA. And I can choose either triangle to make this work. Uh, in terms of a mathematical relationship, if this is the resultant here, I would just have that FR is FAA plus FBB. And this would be my vector addition. All right, so I pick a triangle. Uh, let's say I, I decide to focus in on this lower left triangle right here. And there's some things that I know automatically from just the idea of parallel lines. Like for instance, you know, this line and this line are parallel and it's being intersected by this line right here by the resultant force FR. I know this angle here is also beta which in this case is 80 degrees and I already know alpha 60 degrees and so now it's just a matter of using geometry to solve for the length of these sides BB and AA. With this triangle, I'm going to be able to solve for these components of so the magnitudes of BB and AA using geometry, law of sines, law of cosines. Well, I know that gamma is, let's see, everything adds up to 180. So gamma is 180 minus 80 minus 60, which is 40 degrees. Then from the law of sines, I can figure out the length or the magnitude of the sides for AA and BB. So from here, I have the sine of 40 degrees over FR is equal to the sine of alpha, which is 60 degrees over FBB is equal to the sine of 80 degrees over F. A, A. And so now I know that the resultant force was given to me as 30 newtons and I can use each of these relationships to solve for each of the forces. So here FBB and this tells me FBB is 40.4 newtons. And similarly FAA and this tells me FAA is 40, about 46 newtons. And these are the forces along AA and BB. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Let's try another one. So let's see. I've got kind of this structural system. So I'm given this truss system called this point A, B, and C. And I know that the magnitude of F is 850 pounds and it is 30 degrees 
from line AB or member AB or theta. And so basically theta equals 30 degrees. I also know that the component of force acting along BA is 650 pounds. And what I'd like to do is find, I'd like to find the force along BC that's acting on member BC, and I'd like to find the angle phi. So now I want to draw the parallelogram. I know the resultant force, this F, and I'm going to focus on drawing a parallelogram that has lines parallel to AB and BC. Point B is my concurrent point, and here at the end of the resultant vector, this is where my force resultant will be at the end. And so I want to draw a parallelogram. I have the lines from the tail of the vector. Now I need to draw lines that are parallel with the head of the vector. So here I'm going to draw a line parallel to BC at the head of the vector. Boom, like this. And then I'm going to draw a line parallel to AB. And that's going to be from the head of the vector like this. Boom. And there is my parallelogram. And this is the parallelogram that I'm working with. And the force in BA, all right, this parallelogram or this vector addition is related to this formula here. And I just pick one of the triangles and apply my geometric relationships. So if I choose that triangle on the left, I know theta is 30 degrees. I know already I'm given that FBA is 650 pounds. And the force here, this resultant that I that I'm using is 850 pounds. And then from the law of cosines, I can determine the magnitude of FBC. So that's just FBC squared equals, and this tells me that FBC is 433.6 pounds. And then I want to find the angle associated with FBC. And so here, from the law of sines, I would know that this, if I call this angle gamma, I would say that the sine of gamma over F is equal to the sine of 30 degrees over FBC. And from using this relationship, I would know that this would tell me that gamma, and here we get that gamma is 78.54 degrees. And looking at FBC, if we go back, we knew that FBC here, we knew that this angle here was 45. So here relative to the horizontal, this is 45. And then even here relative to the horizontal, this is 45. And then here, again, because of parallel lines, this is 45. And so if I take that understanding down to here, if I'm trying to find the angle relative to the horizontal for FBA, this angle is gamma. And then the angle relative to the horizontal here is 45 for FBC. And so I can solve this angle here, which I'll call phi. And that's related to the same phi right here based on parallel lines. So this is phi. When I go and I finish this calculation, I'll know that gamma, just from geometry, I'll know that gamma is phi plus 45 degrees. And this will tell me that phi is 78.54 degrees minus 45. And this is 33.5 here. This is the answer angle phi. And I have a force resultant for FBC over here. All right, take it easy. Search a free.